Right, hello everyone, Busy Gamer Dad back again, going to be picking up our Final Fantasy Renaissance episode, kind of where we left off. I got us back to Elfland and stayed at the inn, and now we're going to be running around doing the obligatory turn in quests for the eye, and then getting the herb, bringing the herb to the elf prince, and doing the Mystic Key unlocks for the various uh, locations for that. I don't think I'm going to go back into the Marsh Cave, um, because that's a little bit of a long trek, and I saw some other people's playthroughs and I'm not certain if there's really anything that's like a super net positive for us in there. There might be. Um, I haven't decided yet. I might take you guys along with me on that journey or I might just say, no, I'll do it off screen and I'll let you know when I go back there. Um, beyond that, we're having a little bit of fun. We just defeated uh, Aztos last episode and thankfully he did not cast a uh, rub on any of us to uh, destroy us and hurt my feelings. So that was good. Um, we're making good progress, I think. You know, fourth episode in, gonna be doing the Mystic Quest stuff, or Mystic uh, uh, Key stuff, and then maybe blowing open the canal and going to Melmond and calling the episode there. So that's, I think, the, the trajectory for this episode. Thank you very much for those who have uh, commented on this and told me where to find the Blue Mage's spells and assisted me with some various uh, Dark Knight synergies and things like that. It's very helpful, uh, and I enjoy the dialogue. I enjoy the, the banter. I am also really loving this game. This game is a lot of fun. It's a love letter to Final Fantasy, and it's a reimagining of the game with the Renaissance mode uh, being having new characters like you see in our party here. We have the Dark Knight, the Tamer, the Geomancer, and the uh, Blue Mage. It's a lot of uh, fun to play as different characters in a game that I know and love and enjoy playing, and I can't imagine how long this took, uh, but <clears throat> I will have a description for the game and a link for it so you, so you guys can get it from their Discord server. I, at the time of this recording, it's still free, so I would recommend you download it if you've never played this game. This is a, a highly uh, reimagined game mode that I'm playing in the Renaissance mode, but they do have a classic mode as well that allows you to um, play the original game more in the vein of what they intended with all the uh, stats being uh, able to work, like your run stat and your various other stats and swords and things like that actually functioning inside the context of the game and doing what they're supposed to do. So there is a classic mode with the original cast of characters, and then there's this renaissance mode here that we're playing through this time around with the uh, new uh, classes available. But don't worry, because if you wanted to play the original classes in the renaissance mode that is very possible because the creator of this uh, had the forethought of making sure that the other classes were balanced and had uh, notable talents that made them viable for uh, including them in a run with the blue mage or the dark knight or something like that and that was really cool uh the thief i think in my opinion is probably the most uh, useful early on so i highly recommend if you are on the fence about playing the game to include a thief because they give you a lot of money um so we got the herb and they're uh then we're gonna go back to elfland but the thief is very useful because they can search the overworld for hidden objects and sometimes those objects are money sometimes those are consumables sometimes those are armor and without the thief you don't have access to that the very much like the uh, blue mage there's a bard and there's a dancer where you have to kind of run around and get their skills and spells not from the traditional spell shops but the blue mage is unique in the sense that they have to uh fight monsters and get the monster to use their ability on them and they will um, then uh, have a chance to learn that ability and it's a chance it's a pretty high percent chance especially if you use their skill monster lure or skill lure um so it's uh pretty cool pretty cool that they included that type of mechanic and made it interesting to not just push the a button but also have um that background thought in your head like oh this monster may have an ability that i can have and i might need to do that monster lure ability i have fleshed out their spell book pretty well um you can see that i'm only missing one level three spell uh someone left a comment on where that is it's uh, i believe it's outside provoca and well they said it's outside provoca but i believe it's on the peninsula of power and i don't really want to go to the peninsula of power because i don't want to power level is what it comes down to so if you don't know what the peninsula of power is it's a two square spot right outside provoca in the top uh, right hand corner of the continent that you can walk on and if you walk back and forth on it, you have the chance to fight monsters from another bit of land that you can see in your screen. And that's where it pulls those encounters from. 
and you can fight zombie trolls or zombies, I think it is, and then you can fight uh, frost wolves and I believe frost giants. Um, but they use an ability uh, uh, called frost, and that's what I'm assuming is the missing skill. I'm not entirely sure. I wonder if I can actually control the kaizokus. That'd be really cool if I could. Uh, I don't think the kaizokus would have any other spells. But anyways, it's um, and the, if you can survive it, like you get fire. Traditionally, you would do like fire two and blast them and just get a bunch of money because at this point in the game this early on in the game like we're only about i want to say an hour and a half in the game you need to have a lot of money to get spells from uh elfland okay so they can't be controlled okay cool um and i'm talking about the order of magic like thousands of dollars especially if you have the uh quote unquote traditional party where you have two attackers and two spell casters so you need to have a lot of money to round out their spell books. And if... Oh, I shouldn't have attacked with my Geomancer. Why did I do that? Um, anyways, you saw the, the staff animation. So, um, yeah, the, the, the Peninsula of Power was an excellent way to get money for that um, to, to, to happen for you guys early on. Or for any players early on in their playthrough. Uh, some people skipped it altogether, and that's fine. That makes perfect sense, because you didn't necessarily need it. You would just not have the ability to get those spells. And for anyone who's played the original Final Fantasy here, it is really um, meant... Th the magic system in this game is one that I kind of wish they kept a little bit more intact as they progressed with the Final Fantasy series. Simply stating that magic in later Final Fantasies becomes almost this... A frivolous resource that you can use where every one character you know can can use it and it's not really this precious commodity or precious resource when you're fighting and I kind of feel like that's a, a missed um, a, a opportunity or missed uh, mechanic in their games because magic is meant to be something that's like a last resort or a big uh, feat now, I'm not going to say that they haven't balanced other games when they've brought in the magic systems. They have, but that's just where I feel like I like this system. It's really uh, interesting, and it really gives the, the player a challenge to... Oh, wow, 46 on that. Oh, boy. Um, it really gives the player a challenge to navigate the... Uh, do I use a spell here? Do I wait until the next fight? Um, I do also, you know, in that same vein, like what they did with Geomancer's skills, uh, because the Geomancer has a skill where they can, based on the tile, cast a random spell from their spell book. And you have a chance, like there, it just said, recharge your spells. So they give the player agency, they can control the spells that are cast from the spell book, and it changes based on the tile that the character is on. And so if we're on a, a forest tile here, we have these specific spells. If we're on a grass tile, we have different spells. If we're in a dungeon, we have very different spells. In some cases, in, in most cases, in the dungeons, I don't, I haven't, the Marsh Cave didn't have a heal uh, in the spell book. I, I attacked again. Um, so that was kind of cool to see that you needed to still bring heals and things like that. Um, and then they have a chance to, chance to recharge uh, their spell book. Uh, based on that. So I like that kind of system for the spell casting. I don't know how they would really integrate that into like the black mage or white mages um, uh, skill sets because they're kind of, you know, they have a spell book. They don't draw from the land. It's not in their their lore to do that. So, all right. And so now we've got the prince awake. Yay. Hooray. Thanks. Like warrior. We get the mystic key. Hooray. So the game is in, oh, I should do our dad joke. Um, before we go too far into the rabbit hole of what the game is or isn't anymore. Uh, what do you call, or what do you get when you cross a vampire and a snowman? Frostbite. There you go. There's our dad joke for the episode. Um, but as I was saying, the, uh, the game here isn't changed from the story arc at all. Uh, you have, uh, the four warriors of light and you're trying to make, um, uh, make it through and reignite the, uh, orbs of, uh, the different elements and... Um, if you played the game at all, you know what to do, where to go, and things like that. But if, even if you haven't played the game, it's still a lot of fun. I did want to draw attention to this witch right here. She's one of the scripted battles that you can talk to as the Blue Mage and get a spell from. There are two in Elfland, and there are two inside um, uh, the, the first area, the first half, I guess you would call it. Like, there's Provoka has one, um, and in Cornelia, there's another one. Um, and this odd eye is also one you have the ability to, uh, um, I wanted to do this real quick. Let's do this here. Um, let me see if I can do it this way. Hopefully I can show you. 
Um, the reason why I have the... So the reason why I chose this party makeup is because I don't know where the spells are, and so I have the tamer to help get uh, that information. The tamer controls a monster, and it can tell me what monsters have um, spells on them for my blue mage to learn. The challenge with that, unfortunately, is that I've never found one out in the wild, and uh, like I said, Provoka seems to be where one is out in the wild. But if I go into, is it special? So Gaze, right here. So this is where I have the Tamer and the Blue Mage. A good synergy there to find out and round out the um, the, the Blue Mage's spellbook for Monsters in the Wild. And then the Tamer, if he's on the um, Overworld, he can actually uh, cause rare uh, spawns to fight. And that's actually really cool and really good and useful. Um, so they, they uh, those two have a good synergy, and then the Blue Mage and the uh, Dark Knight have a really good synergy because a lot of the Blue Mage's spells are um, uh, like Blind and Darken and things like that, and that really helps out with um, the Dark Knight's chance to hit, where they can have uh, they have a bonus to enemies that are darkened, uh, and that's just in their their kit, that's in their skills. Um, it's a passive that they always have. And then our Geomancer is kind of the last one to round out our, our spells because they are definitely like the, the carry, as someone said in our um, in, in the comments, uh, where they can they they can sample a spell, I think after their class change, as opposed to, oh, this is the, the Blue Mage. Um, they can sample a spell and they can uh, bring it with you from a tile set. So yeah, I think it's really cool that they have um, the, the that kind of ability and utility. And I think that's why I, um, I'm thinking that they're going to be the big carry. They're going to be the, the the sleeper success for our game. We'll see. I don't know. They, But they are definitely a glass cannon. They get hit, and you feel it. Oh my. You definitely feel it. Um, so, oh, I did get some armor. I should probably be putting that on there, huh? Um, the, the challenge I'm going to run into, though, is... Uh, our Dark Knight, our Tamer, and our Blue Mage seem to wear a lot of the same armor. So I'm gonna have some battles over what to put on who. I'm I'm thinking that our Dark Knight is gonna need a lot more armor than our Tamer. And I also worry that our Tamer is going to um, uh, run into a situation where they've got no end game utility because they might just be a good melee attacker and stuff like that, physical damage dealer, and that's great, that's fine. But against boss battles and things like that, they're not going to have the ability to tame anything. So it's like, what are their, what's their skills gonna be in that fight? Uh, so I don't know what their class change is going to bring. Um, and I do also know that there are ultimate quests in the game for uh, characters and ultimate um, armor, like you do have in a lot of the uh, later Final Fantasy games. So keep that in mind for yourselves when you play through. Think about what classes synergize. Uh, somebody in the comments listed out what the the basic kind of utilities are or roles for the classes, and you can adhere to that if you want to, you know, which ones are support classes, which ones are um, physical damage dealers or tanks, and which ones are uh, uh, magical damage dealers and things like that. So, um, I'll put the, I'll put the, the, the tamer out there. Um, oh, I need to get the, I have the Mystic Key, so I'm going to get myself back up in here to go to the Temple of Fiends. Um, the Geomancer also has an overworld ability where they are able to, um, uh, not take damage from, uh, damaged tiles. So that's really helpful for, like, the, uh, uh, volcano where you don't have, uh, to worry about taking damage on anything. Oh no, gargoyles! And they strike first. I don't think these guys turn us to stone, but they do hit quite a bit. Yeah. So, oh, and I didn't do it again. I didn't actually, um... Let me see, I don't think they have the ability to turn us to stone, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, one foe, paralysis on one foe. Let's do the AOE. Uh, and then... Let's do all enemies. Yeah, let's get through this real quick. Um... But yeah, that, I'm enjoying my playthrough of this. I hope you guys are too. Um, and I, I'm going to load these videos up every every Sunday, I believe, until we get through this. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And oh, good. Bone. Close in does darkness. That's awesome. That'll help uh, with Rion's chance to hit. But like I said, I'm worried about the utility of our tamer most of all um, late game. I'm sure he'll have 
some utility, but maybe not as much as like another class would have had if I had gone with even just the standard like monk or um, thief or, or even a red mage or something. Uh, I don't know. I didn't actually read if I can actually control these guys or not. I don't think I can. But if I can, it's bonus experience. So they do give bonus experience if you tame something. Nice, two hits, 90 damage, good stuff. Yep, gotta get that money. Alright, and the rune sword. So while we have our window open, let's see here. Who can use... No one can use the hammer. The blue mage can use this rune sword, though. Okay, so let's trade that to him. Is it better, though? 15, 10, 25, 18... Yes, so this is better. Is this better than the hand axe? So the tamer gets a passive bonus to hand axes. And I don't think this is better. No, it's not better. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Good stuff. And then, oh, I need to put the armor on. Let's see your armor. Nah. Yeah, he's the only one who can use armor. Everyone can use the copper. He's the only one who can use the copper. Fair enough. Works for me. Alright, cool. I think we're sitting pretty good with the armor. We'll have to go clean out our inventory um, in uh, uh, Cornelia after we get through these. So you'll notice I'm also not getting into any encounters here on the overworld with uh, the tamer out. An added overworld benefit. So you don't get um, encounters, but you do have the chance to get uh, rare encounters. So I'm not certain if you're, when you fight on scripted tiles that have monsters, if you get like the maximum amount on that tile. That would, oh, that, that graphic looks awesome. I totally forgot that looks like that. So. Yeah, I'm not certain if you, like, have your tamer out and you all of a sudden have to fight six wizards or four wizards or something like that in the March game. Because you can fight up, to, you can fight anywhere from two to four, I believe is what it is. So, yeah, fun stuff for, for you guys to, to, to play around with. I don't think they have any magic, and I don't think they have any specials. No, they don't. Uh, cool thing with the tamer, though, is you can also have them run. The monsters run away. Uh, so if you didn't want to fight um, all of them, you can certainly have that one run away and then try and retame. And again, why would you though? Because that was a huge hit from them. So yeah, I think it's well worth it to have them uh, do their tame ability and then just have them fight for you. Because also, I believe it adds another party member technically for them, by them, the enemy to hit. So you have that utility from him as well. The wear sword. Soft. I don't think anyone's gonna. Yep, and then we're gonna fight the gargoyles again. I don't believe that we have um, anyone who can use the wear sword. If anyone could, it would probably be our blue mage. We just gave him the rune sword. We'll see how well this goes um, and see if it's actually anything worth it. He's getting two hits now, which is pretty good. Most everybody has two hits right now. Um, our dark knight, unfortunately, is one of those min-max physical damage guys where they actually have a negative hit right now. And they're doing pretty well, honestly. They're holding their own with their swings. But it turns into a situation where if you are... Um, you, you have to make a conscious choice. Like, there's a weapon later on that you can get that has a positive hit rate for them, but it's not as strong. So keep that in mind for yourselves and, and your, uh, your playthrough. If you choose to have them. And then a ghoul. I don't think ghouls have anything they might have like paralysis or something like that but again i've round i've maxed out his spell book i'm not certain if there are other spells that i just missed with him for uh, uh with my blue mage for him to use can't be controlled okay so zombies can't be controlled gotcha oh and i think somebody mentioned that in the comments i do I, uh, yeah so now that somebody said that so they did actually put in those mechanics as well like humanoids can't be controlled and other things can't be controlled. No one can use the wear sword, so... Oh, no, no, that's the hammer. It's wear beasts, plus 15. So, 18, 15, two and a half. 18, 15, two and a half. Okay, so... It's good against spellcasters. Good against wear beasts. There's not really that many wear beasts that I've encountered. So I guess I'm gonna leave the rune sword on for now. And that'll be, um, More useful. Uh, for us overall. Um... But yeah, like I was saying, they 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 kept the mechanics for um, uh, later Final Fantasy games where undead uh, heal magic, I believe, kills them, 
and if you cast a drain spell on undead, you take damage and various other, um, uh, what was a common mechanics for, you know, negative energies and things like that. And what you would think, like, if you drain undead, you're going to get damaged, you know, that's kind of the thing behind it, because you're not a necromancer. I don't think they will uh, implement that class, but there is actually, I should talk about this, uh, the Discord server is very active, and there's a uh, request a feature field, and there's a lot of people putting a lot of great uh, requests in there and a lot of great ideas for um, for the game. Whether they're all implemented or not is going to take a huge amount of effort and time, and I don't know the person, the, the, you know, Renaissance Games uh, availability to implement any, if not um, all of them, over the course of any type of time. But there's a lot of people out there who want to have... Um, necromancers and other classes added just to see if uh see how they would function in the game and see what they would bring to the table from a uh, a uh, uh, final fantasy one control kind of thing you know like have a uh some people called it like um uh what was it yellow mage is what what they said where they get double items and things like that so yeah um i'm kind of leaning right now really heavy on the um uh, uh, tamer's ability to tame and get a bonus experience point or two after a fight, and that's kind of where I'm, you know, maximizing what they can do early on. There is in this game, I believe, a still uh, still has the cap on the spells. Um, do I want to? Yeah, I'll just. No, it's just one ally, so I'll just do this for now. Um, so keep that in mind for your playthroughs when you're going through and doing the things and the stuff. Uh, We'll get ourselves into Cornelia here, and then we'll get ourselves um, the TNT and go over to the dwarf area and unlock uh, Melman, and probably call the video, like I said, over there. Should take us just only a few more minutes to get there. Alright. Cool. Nope, it's not in the cast. No, it is in the cast. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Over here. So... As the blue mage, when you have the blue mage out, you can talk to NPCs and they will give you those scripted battles that you have um, access to for the blue mage. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't have a blue mage, they don't say anything. Um, the bard is very interesting to me because the, you still have to talk around everybody and figure out what you can get from them. And it, the, the new classes basically make it so you have to talk to everybody in this game now. Where it's like, oh, that's a really nice idea. You know, instead of making it just like you have, um, you, you know where you're going, you're like speedrunning it. This is like reinventing the game for speedrunning it. And I don't even know what like the, the meta or most optimized uh, party would be. Um, I have ideas in my head on what it would could be. Um, like the Dragoon is actually a really strong candidate. But again, you have uh, a lot of give and take with that. Um, let's see, so we got some new weapons. Step. Oh, they can use it, so let's see about that. And then they can probably use the dagger too. No, they. Uh, 16, 15. Nope, still not good. Sure. They're awesome. Alright, we'll offload some stuff here in Cornelia. So that'll be good for us to get a little bit more money. Um, I'm living by the rules in the game right now where I don't have a lot of spells for Rion. Rion can get um, uh, dark magic spells from uh, the, the various shops. Uh, so up to you if you want to do that. Up to you if you think that's worth it for you to invest and round out his spell book. Because I also don't know what he's going to be able to be using later on. Um, if during the class change he might get some other spells or out in the world his... Um, class change uh, changes up what spells he can use effectively. So, I'm enjoying uh, the, ra no, I don't want to say randomness. I'm enjoying the newness. Because it's not random, it's controlled. There are, I'm sure, guides out there by now because, like I said, the Discord server is pretty, pretty active and pretty friendly, actually. So, keep that in mind for your, for, for if you have any questions and things like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to sell all this because he's the only one I is he the only one who can use the iron armor? I believe he is. Let me just hose myself. Yeah, he's the only one who can use the iron armor. Absorb a four. Yeah, so he... Yeah, okay. And then no one can use the shield, so we can get rid of that. Okay, 
so... Okay. Yeah, we'll sell everything off this in here and get, get a little bit more money. And then we'll be good to go to the, um... Dwarves and say hi to them. Uh, there was a, um... Actually, that was everything. Yeah, there was a, um... Oh, there are new spells in the game, too. So, um, Bio is new. There's a couple other spells. There's Pain, which is like, you basically dish out as much damage as you take. But he doesn't have a Taunt ability. So, I'm a little on the fence about how useful that spell is going to be. I bought it just because I wanted to, and to see how it would work. Um... So it could be very useful later on, especially if he's going to be our frontliner, where he's the only one who takes the damage, which would be great. And maybe there's a spell that's like, you know, a, a call darkness or something like that, where he uh, taunts people to, to attack him. Let's get ourselves over to the dwarves. Get some dwarves. So, um, but yeah, the, uh, the tamer and the blue mage can wear and use light armor and uh, a myriad of weapons that are, um, you know, axes. And then actually there are whips in the game now. And the whips, I believe, according to um, the uh, the Discord, increases chance to tame. So that's very useful and uh, very nice to have. But again, I don't know if, like, the, the challenge I'm going to have and I'm struggling in my head with the tamer to see is like he's the first one that got two hits because he has the axe i hope there are other axes and there's all new items in the game as well and i'm hopeful that there's another axe that's later on or a whip that's very uh good for him to use later on that allows him to be viable um or more viable in the late game so the blue mage i can see the utility because they have magic to draw from and that's going to be really helpful especially in the end game chaos shrine uh, the one thing that I'm really concerned about with my party makeup, though, is I have no revives. Alright, so we'll turn in the TNT. They'll go do their thing. Um, but yeah, there's no, there. I have no re way of reviving. They didn't implement any Phoenix Downs, and I don't want them to, actually. There's, there's been a little bit of discourse on that in the, um, on the Discord server, and there's people talking, is it you know, a way to revive via consumables would be really nice. But I almost, like, don't want that because that, to me, is not in the true spirit of what this game was back in the day. But, you know, I'm not the one who made the game, so I can't say what would be uh, appropriate or anything like that. It looks like we're already changing out our rune sword. 18, 15, 2.5... 19, 15, 5... And good against dragons. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it on. 1955, yeah. Because that, this may be good, but I think this is also better. And then let's see here. Iron helmet? Yes. No one can wear the wood. Silver armor is 18. So he's got 24. Oh, okay, so the silver armor can be worn by our tamer and our blue mage. By Fluffy and by Andy. I think I want to put it evade minus 15. I think I'll put it on our blue mage. Cool. Awesome. And then we'll have to pick up uh, another set of armor somewhere for um, Fluffy to get. I do love the sprite work that's been put into the game for all the characters that you have. I like the little beanie on the... Uh, that was really what made me pick the Geomancer, was that he has a little beanie on his head. I like it. Um, and then I like the Dark Knight as well. I think they did a really good job with the Dark Knight's um, the sprite. Alright, cool. So, the canal is open now, and we're going to go get ourselves to Melmond, and I'm going to call the episode there, I believe, and we'll have some fun. Uh, in our next episode, bringing ourselves up to, uh, I guess, down to the, you know, Cave of Earth and getting through all that fun jazz. Um, 
So Busy Gamer Dad, showing you Final Fantasy Renaissance, having a great time with it. Hopefully you are too. Like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Check out the other videos I've got on the channel, and we'll catch you next episode in Final Fantasy Renaissance, where we'll fight the uh, Earth Fiend, or no, we'll fight the Vampire and do all that. And then the episode after that, we'll fight the Earth Fiend. So stick around for those two episodes, and we'll hope to see you there. Later!